Last night, Wisconsin held a special election for State Senate District 10. And you should know that at least historically for the past couple of decades, this has been a pretty red district. So in the 2016 presidential election, Trump beat Hillary Clinton 55 to 38 in the district. That's a resounding win right there. Mm -hmm. Mitt Romney won the district in 2012, despite losing statewide against President Barack Obama. He won by six points. So. Uh, even though Wisconsin went blue, that district stayed red and it became redder with uh, Donald Trump. And so, you know, this is like the sort of state Senate election that you just, yeah, whatever, you're not gonna cover it because obviously they're gonna keep it. Except it's not so obvious because they didn't. Democrat Patty Schachner defeated Republican Adam Jarchow, uh, flipping control of a seat that has been held by Republicans since 2000. So, yes, she won despite the fact that no Democrat has held the seat for nearly two decades uh, at this point. This makes, by the way, the 34th flipped a seat in the Trump era. All right, so obviously we're gonna do two things. One is, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Down goes Jarchow, down goes Jarchow. He said it couldn't be done. <laughs> I don't know who Jarchow is. <laughs> Jar Jar, I mean, no. Jar Jar. <laughs> Jar Jar, bye bye. Uh, so anyway, Jarchow's gone. Um, of course, he's a local state uh, Senate hopeful. Of course, you don't know him and I don't know him. Uh, kidding aside, I do have one fun thing from the soundboard. <laughs> okay, so let, let me explain why the celebration. So uh, number one, uh, I did the math. Uh, Trump had won by 17 points. She won, the Democrat in this case, won by nine points. Uh, so that is a 26 point swing, 26 point swing. Now we've had a lot of special elections since Trump got into office. And there's been a lot of wild swings like this in near Tulsa, Oklahoma. There was a district that Trump had won by over 30 points. And a 26 year old lesbian mom, progressive, very progressive, won that district. And so that was an even larger swing, right? So, but we're starting to lose track of the enormity of it. 26 point swings are not a little bit, they're not medium sized, they're colossal. That is an enormous swing. Now, as John pointed out, second reason and related obviously is 34 seats have swung. That's an awful lot of seats and when we haven't had a lot of elections since Trump yeah. won. These are just special elections, local state races, etc. So 34 seats is a hell of a lot of seats under that context. So some felt like it, that it wasn't that big a deal because a couple of the congressional races like in Kansas and Montana and Georgia went to the Republicans so they thought they were okay. But those were, a lot of them were deeply red districts and that was when Trump had just begun. Mm -hmm. So now we've had a lot more of Trump and apparently people want a lot less of him. Um, Final point that's really important why this local state race is actually super relevant to the entire nation is that it's in a rural area. And now in the reddest places, in the most rural areas, Democrats are starting to win. And and if that trend continues nationwide in 2018, oof. Tsunami ain't the half of it, man. Right now, the Republican Party beginning to realize what's going on, but the, of course, Trump doesn't. The water is receding, and they're like, "Oh, cool, the water's going out." No, that's right before the tsunami hits right on top of your <laughs> head. Okay, get out, get out of the beach. Okay, so uh, this kind of swing uh, is uh, really, I think, is now beginning to be indicative. And I didn't say that in the beginning, mm -hmm. but that Oklahoma race that I referred to, I think that was a tipping point. And, and here we are past the tipping point. Republicans are in a world of hurt. Yeah, I think at one point, uh, John Oliver made a chart of all of the swings from Trump in that district to the special election result. And it was, I mean, 26 is good, but there were quite a few that were above 26. And we can't guarantee that that's going to continue. Um, and on a larger point, I'm gonna stand in for uh, Jared Jackson from earlier today, don't Get relaxed. Um, we, not, we need to not only win all these elections, and a lot can happen in seven, nine, ten months, a long time. Um, but we also need to make sure that we're winning them with the right people. And that's why the upcoming rounds of primaries is so important. Uh, I think that Donald Trump being the 
the figurative and legislative and executive head of the Republican Party means that basically people will take anything to stop him, but we can't settle for anything. We need the right candidates too. So I agree. I think that there probably is going to be some sort of a tsunami, but do not for one second stop until we are weeks past the tsunami. Yeah, so let me double down on that. And so the part of the reason that this phenomenon is happening is not um, what you would normally uh, suspect and not what a lot of media is talking about. It's not like um, Republicans got up one day in the red, reddest area of Wisconsin and went like, you know what, golly gee. You know, I think I, I like the, uh, the liberals more now and, and they went out and voted for them. Now, that happens to some degree, but the bigger phenomenon is progressives, Democrats are energized yes. and they show up to vote. And Republicans are enervated, and so they think, oh, what am I going to go vote in these elections for? And and since they're dispirited, that voter turnout is the lion's share of the reason why you're having these uh, uh, huge swings. So if you relax and you stay at home during election day, well, then that defeats the whole point, <laughs> and you won't have these results. Totally. And so, but it goes to a second point that's really important, and I'll, we'll have a test case of it. Uh, relatively soon, um, which is that if you give people a reason to get excited, that is why a lot of the very progressive candidates are winning uh, in even bigger margins. Because people go, oh, that person's gonna fight for me. So they show up to vote in a special election when not a lot of people do, right? If you put out a weak sauce candidate, I would argue the one in Georgia was in the congressional election that says, oh, gentility, be gentle, be polite, civil to Republicans. Uh, then people don't show up to vote as much and then you lose. So the, the test case is Pennsylvania 18th. Uh, that's a, there's a special election coming up there because Tim Murphy resigned in disgrace. He had gotten an abortion for his mistress when he claimed to be pro-life. I love saying that. Um, okay, so I just interviewed Bob Solomon, who's from that district, who's gonna run uh, next time around in the general election um, coming up in, in November. Uh, and he's a progressive. And what did the Democratic Party do? They took a weak sauce guy who's like benign and doesn't want to talk about policies and is trying to be Republican line, and they're running him in that district because mm -hmm. it is a heavily Republican district in Pennsylvania. My Let's guess test it. Yeah. What's that? Let's test it. Exactly, so I think my guess, if I'm right, and that's why I like to say things ahead of time, so it's not Monday morning quarterback, is that that guy probably won't win. But that's not a bold statement. Like I said, it's a heavily Republican district, and it is a congressional race. You'll have more voter turnout, so Democrat probably won't win. But let's look at the margin in that race. And if it turns out that it's not as close as the other races, that'll give you some indication, don't run weak sauce. You're not getting Republicans to switch over. You're either getting Democrats to show up to vote or they're not, and that's what's making the difference. Yeah, and if you're if you're feeling energized, I mean, there are uh, you can go online and you can find uh, calendars have been put together of all of the national uh, special elections that are going on at the at the local level, at the state level, and all that. So you can get invested in those. A lot of them are probably happening in your area. But elections are not the be all end all of politics. There's a lot going on every single day across the country. I see video of some awesome dreamer defense protests and marches and stuff that are going on. This Saturday is the is the women's march. I'll be at the the LA. Like there's there's a lot of that sort of thing going on as well. Elections obviously very important and you have to show up then. But there's a lot of other stuff going on as well. And one one last thing here, or a couple of last things. So uh, Scott Walker now in a panic. He's up yeah. for re-election uh, next week. You got the tweets? Yeah, you want to read them? Yeah, go ahead. So we've got uh, Scott Walker saying, Senate District 10 special election win by Democrat is a wake up call for Republicans in Wisconsin. So that's probably the smartest thing he's ever said. And then he said, wake up call, can't presume that voters know we are getting positive things done in Wisconsin. Help us share the good news. I like that the second tweet sounds more panicked. He capitalized <laughs> wake up call and put it in the meeting. He's like, no, seriously, wake up. And he says, share the good news. Look, we, we would say similar things about, hey, share our, our uh, ideas with folks. But with the Republicans, the way they share good, good news, the good news is I got tax cuts for the rich. Mm -hmm. Okay, now do you wanna share that widely? No, nah, not really. So what they mean is, Hey, Koch brothers, send money. <laughs> We're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so that we can share the good news. 
for the middle class, <laughs> right? So they're gonna buy a lot of ads, they're gonna do a lot of propaganda. But in this election, the Republicans way outspent the Democrat and they still lost. Mm -hmm. That's why Scott Walker's in a bigger panic. He's like, wait, if I can't buy my way to a victory, how the hell would I win? <laughs> exactly. That's why 30 Republicans have already retired mm -hmm. uh, in Congress. They see and understand what a lot of people on TV and certainly in Washington are not getting, the people in the establishment are not getting, which is that poll numbers are real. They're not fake news. When Trump's in the low 30s and the Republican approval is this low, you know what happens? You lose, and not only close elections, but what you previously thought were unlosable elections. That's why guys like Daryl Issa are running as fast as they can as yeah. Um, my ex Jamaican girlfriend used to say, Who I want to stay, stay, stay? Who I want to run, 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 run? And they are gone. Uh, so, nothing but good news, uh, at least for today. If you like this video, bless your heart. We got a lot more where that came from. We do a full show every day, Monday through Friday. Come enjoy it ad free by becoming a member. TYTnetwork.com slash join.